In 2010, Shannon faced many challenges. Her marriage ended, and she was diagnosed with lupus, an autoimmune disease. Despite these difficulties, she persevered and worked hard to rebuild her life. Eventually, she bought her first home. During this time, Shannon received a friend request on Facebook from a man named Chris Watts. They began messaging and instantly connected. After two years, they got married and relocated to Frederick, Colorado. They welcomed their first child, a daughter named Bella, a year later in 2011. In 2015, their second daughter, Celeste, was born. Shannon was filled with joy when she became a mother, something she never expected due to her health issues. However, problems were already arising in her marriage with Chris. Shannon worked for a company that used a multi-level marketing model and sold weight loss supplements called Thrive. Chris, on the other hand, worked as an oil field operator at Anadarko Petroleum. The family faced financial challenges, including student loans, credit card debt, and medical bills. Despite their combined salaries, they struggled to manage these expenses. The situation became even more difficult after their daughters were born, as both girls suffered from severe allergies, requiring expensive medication on a regular basis. Despite these hardships, the family appeared perfect to outsiders. Shannon's job required her to be active on social media, and she dedicated a significant amount of time to promoting her products. Her social media profile is brimming with numerous photos and videos capturing precious family moments. You'll find Chris playing with the kids, the entire family enjoying vacations, and personal stories about Shannon's health struggles and how meeting Chris transformed her life in wonderful ways. In the summer of 2018, Chris and Shannon's relationship took a turn for the worse, unknown to Shannon at the time. Chris began having an affair with a co-worker named Nicole Kessinger. According to Nicole, their relationship started in June 2018, and she was unaware that Chris was married. They got to know each other while working in the office. Chris described feeling controlled by Nikki. He felt an instant connection when their eyes met, and he showered her with romantic cards containing song lyrics expressing eternal love. They also went on dates together. As per Nichols' account, Chris appeared more committed to their relationship than she was. However, investigators discovered that Nichol had been actively searching for information about Chris and Shannon. She searched for wedding dresses and even asked Google whether text messages could be traced by the police. Shannon, on the other hand, started feeling that something was off with her husband. She confided in her friends, expressing concerns about Chris' lack of communication and lack of physical intimacy between them. During that summer, she and her daughters took a trip to her parents' house in North Carolina for a five-week vacation. Meanwhile, Chris stayed home to work, and Shanann was upset because he hardly communicated with her or their daughters. The reason for his lack of contact was his constant presence with Nickel. He claimed he was finalizing his divorce, and soon they would be together alone. Shanann suspected he was cheating on her because of his changed behavior, but chose not to confront him. Chris was unhappy about Shanann's pregnancy, and this led to a huge fight between them. On August 9th, Shannon left for a three-day work trip, and Chris stayed home to look after the girls. During this time, Chris had already decided that he was going to unalive her. Shanann returned home on August 13th, around two in the morning. After she returned home, Chris committed a horrifying act by taking the lives of his daughters and his wife. He used their pillows to suffocate them while they were in their beds. He then proceeded to strangle Shanann in their room. She didn't resist, but her eyes were filled with blood. Chris believed she might have been praying before her death. While he was wrapping Shanann's body in a sheet, his daughters unexpectedly entered the room and asked what was wrong with their mommy. He was surprised to see them alive. He lied and told them that Shanann wasn't feeling well. He then carried her body downstairs to the garage, placing garbage bags over her head and feet. He loaded her onto the back seat of his work truck and instructed Bella and Cece, his daughters, to join him in the back. Their mother's lifeless body was on the floor near their feet. They drove for nearly an hour to an isolated oil site where Chris intended to work that day. He knew he would be alone there. Chris buried Shanann, and the girls remained seated by the truck. 
Cece had a blue blanket, which he placed over her head and strangled her right then and there. Bella, who was sitting beside Cece, met the same fate. Bella's final words were, Daddy, no, and he dumped both their bodies in an oil tank. After the murders, Chris expressed that he felt liberated to be with Nikki. He described overwhelming feelings of love for her, devoid of any remorse. The darkness within him had triumphed. He felt consumed by an evil force, capable of justifying any act of violence. Around noon, Chris received a call from Shanann's friend, Nicole, who was concerned about Shanann. Chris claimed that Shanann had taken the girls to a play date, but Nicole found it suspicious. Shanann had a doctor's appointment that morning and had asked Nicole for a ride, but she was nowhere to be found. This was unusual behavior for Shanann. Nicole tried reaching out to Chris several more times for assistance, but when he didn't provide any further help, she decided to contact the police to request a welfare check. It was after this call that Chris drove back to the house. When the police arrived, they found the house completely empty with no trace of Shanann or the girls. The interaction between the police officer and Chris was recorded with the officer's body camera, and Chris' behavior was highly suspicious. He avoided talking or looking at the officers, showing no concern for his wife or daughters. Upon investigation, it was discovered that Chris had been unfaithful to Shanann, which led to him being brought in for questioning. Initially, he denied cheating or having any involvement in his family's disappearance. However, he underwent a lie detector test, which he failed. Eventually, Chris confessed and was arrested on charges of third-degree murder. The next day, the remains of Shanann and the girls were found. Chris was later found guilty on multiple counts of murder, including the charges for Cece and Bella, who were under the age of 12. He was found guilty of unlawfully causing the death of his unborn son, leading to an unlawful termination of a pregnancy. And so we have come to an end of today's case. We are left with a chilling reminder of human depravity. The transformation of a seemingly happy and normal family into an unspeakable tragedy serves as a somber lesson. May their souls rest in peace. If you like our content, please like and subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon.